Hello, this is Dylan Sieverts going over um, calculating steps five through seven um, for the wind tunnel. Um, starting with step number five, um, reviewing the videos that you went over um, regarding the wind tunnel. So basically, summarizing all of those, you had your wind tunnel, you had the wind either blocked off um, a certain amount or the air restricted, one of the two. Um, and then you took different measurements there with the anemometer. And moving forward to the next videos um you basically showed how to put a rubber band around a sphere and hang it from the side of the wind tunnel after you flip it on its side and calculate the force of the air um or the drag you could say by putting the force meter right behind the sphere um, when it was touching it at stationary position and then proceeded to turn on the air and got that measurement at different air velocities um, and so that was basically the videos you proceeded to do the same thing with the the long sphere and the short block um, with the big side facing the wind direction and then flipped it on its side for a smaller rectangle um there wasn't a golf ball in the video but we have data for that and then moving on to step number six i just imported the excel spreadsheet here into my notes and i after doing this I'm not sure if I did it correctly, but I took the average velocity. Um, if I did it in Excel, I could have calculated the force of drag for every single position, but that seemed like a crazy amount of values and I'm not sure that you wanted that. So I took the average velocity and got my air density, which is 1.225. That's just from Google, um, since we don't necessarily have a sheet for that. And then the force of drag equation is one half times the coefficient of, oops, this is pointing to the wrong thing. The coefficient of drag times the cross-sectional area of the object times air density times velocity squared. So these are all my calculations for those, for the sphere you can see, the cylinder, the long and short end, the golf ball, the block, small and large face. Um, as I went over this with my group, um, we didn't actually record our Discord because last time the audio did not work and it was just our faces. Um, but we did meet multiple times and we were discussing um, whether or not the co drag coefficient right here takes in account the um, integration of the surface area of a sphere. For example, we know that the sphere is tapered um, and so that surface area is constantly changing from zero until the surface area of the circle which is this number which would be that and then this would go to zero um, so we weren't too familiar with that drag coefficient and whether or not it accounted for the shape which I, we believe it did so we went with that and then we went with the traditional cross-sectional area of a sphere 
which was at the center. Um, and we did the same thing for the cylinder for the long and short end. I found all of those values on Google. So the second number here um, in all of my equations that I solved is my drag coefficient and that could be off because <laughs> um, I found lots of different numbers everywhere um, that were slightly different but yeah basically these are my calculations for the force of drag based upon just the values that were given and they all were pretty close um, to hitting one of the four velocity points. Um, they weren't off by too much. Um, some of them were pretty close. Others were off by maybe half of what your values were um, or average values. And yes, and then moving on to my Excel spreadsheet. I will have to make another video for that.